everyone. My name is Pam Venuti, and I'll be your moderator this evening. And I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958, and since that time we've gone about to establish branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to the dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Oh, <laughs> Joel Turner, <laughs> and the president, Dr. Cynthia Williams. Cynthia. I yeah, Cynthia Williams. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> In this school, we teach by we. Uh, wait a minute. In the school, we use the true, correct, and original name of our Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The correct name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which has been improperly substituted by Lord. The correct title of the Word or Son is Elohim, which has been improperly substituted by God. And the correct name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, which has been erroneously substituted to read Jesus or Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord or God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. With some investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages would contain any characters or letters that would produce the sound that's made by the letter J. The letter J didn't come into the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah, therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. And we have Yahweh symbolized in this pure spirit state as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn the form cloud all the way around the edges of the chart, and everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of, perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim, the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form appears in divine visions and is understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests in a fleshly body as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation where we can be saved. And, the name, it, it, we and we must know that name. Therefore, the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of a Holy Name Bible. Also in the school we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It's called a divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. 
It consisted of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. Now also in the school we go about to show proof how that everything is made and operates according to, to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how that nothing escapes the pattern. Now, in this school we have ten primary constitutional aims and objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a new universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua's Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage the <coughs> promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which we once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known from the beginning the ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. And this morning we'll have the lecture dedicated with a prayer by Dr. Jennifer Marshall. That will be followed by our scripture, which is 1 John, the fifth chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. And then we'll have, um, any guest acknowledgments? Do we do guest acknowledgments? No? Okay. All right. Um, and I'm, I'm, I would like to go back and just introduce <laughs> Ms. Smith here <laughs> as our president. <laughs> and if we could silence all um, electronic devices, please. Dr. Jennifer. Let's all bow our hearts and minds. And thank Yahshua for bringing us here again to know more about our Creator. And we'd like to thank Yahweh for being with us all the time and that we should have comfort in that. And whatever happens, we know that Yahweh is in control. And let us continue to come and learn more and to love each other because that's what's very important if we love the brethren then we know we are of Yahweh. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading this morning out of the King James Bible, inserting the proper names. First John, the fifth chapter. Whosoever believeth that Yahshua is the Messiah is born of Yahweh, and every one that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of Yahweh when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Yahshua is the son of Yahweh? This is he that came by water and blood, 
even Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not Yahweh hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that Yahweh gave of his Son. And this is the record that Yahweh hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of Yahweh hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of Yahweh sinneth not. But he that is begotten of Yahweh keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of Yahweh, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of Yahweh is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahshua the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. That was 1 John, the fifth chapter. Amen. For our first speaker, I'd like to introduce Dr. Lodora Nicholas. There is a three-speaker format for your information. this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. It's always a pleasure and an honor to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father in truth and in love. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a hard word, love. People takes it and, you know, and use it in all different manner of life and they just don't know what it really truly means. What love really truly means. Because they'll tell you they love you and then two seconds later, you know, they do something that's not loving. But they say they love you and they did it out of love, you know. And it's only to get to gain some kind of respect for themselves. And that's that's what it all boils down to, you know, when they do something for you and you know, it's not like what Yahweh has given us, the love that Yahweh has shown us and given us. Because he took us out of all that ignorance. And and John it tells us, you know, if if we need to know anything about him, we have to go to the Son. That's the only name that we can be saved in. It's Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh is spirit. We can't see it. We can't detect it. We can't do none of that. So we need a comforter. We need something other than 
death. Because what what did we say? If Yahweh is spirit and he's love, you can't you can't touch it. You, you know, so you need something that the physical eye can come in contact with. That you know that, that will describe what, what he means by his love. And, and, and it's telling us, you know, it's three that bear witness in this earth plane and in heaven. And if we don't know what that three is, you know, we are lost. Because it's not talking about us. It's not talking about us. Keep you out the way. Kill you every day. Look in the mirror and take you out the way. Because that deception is right there. When you look in the mirror, you see all kind of good stuff. Oh, yeah, I look good, you know, and everything. And you got to... And, and it's not true. It's that out appearance that we're looking at, but it's what's inside. It, you know, it's, it's what's inside, you know what I mean, that, that, that counts. Because it's coming out. You know, it's coming out whether you want it to or not. It's coming out. You know, that's my brother tell me, you know, every day we wake up, we got good morning, sis. I say, good morning, brother. I said, did you kill you all yet? <laughs> he, look, he tell me, he said, no. I said, well, I ain't going to talk to you until you kill you all. Because I know it's going to be a conflict. You know what I mean? Conflict of interest right there. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we, you know, it's, that's the love. You know, you do not go to bed without saying good night. I love you. We wake up. Good morning. I love you. And we kill each other all. I say, well, before you talk to me, please kill you all. You know what I mean? Because see, what you think, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I said, now you could tell me what you want or what, you know, what I need to do. But guess what? Other than that, you, you know, we don't go through that. We could be in that house all day and won't say one word to each other. Until some y'all would just put something on our mind. Then you say, oh, I just, I just, y'all would just gave me a, I said, what it is? He got, then he'll tell me. I said, oh, okay, well, you know, that's good, you know. And people say, well, I don't hear y'all in there because y'all, we got to, we don't, we, we communicate spirit from the heart, from the soul. You know, he already know where I stand at, you know, my heart. You know what I mean? He knows that. So he don't have to, you know, wonder, you know, and then I holler, I say, did you see that on television? He a lab. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, but you got the insight, you know, but that's the love that we are talking about. Yahweh has given us so much from pure spirit into shape and form and you know we you know he did a whole lot right here when he left this this that's a death I mean uh, we couldn't we could even do that it takes us a hard time just to step up to the plate on a daily basis you know what I mean we, we you know it, it's hard it didn't have to deal with a carnal mind but, but, you know when you when you enter out there into the world Everybody has their opinion, and, you know, and everything, and I put the brakes on, eh! you know, they tell, they say, what that mean? I say, just stop right there. Just stop right there. You know, because what you're telling me is not even true. You know, you want to know something about you, you're hungry, but you don't want to listen. You know, you look at me like I'm a nutcase, you know, you know, but, it, you know, it, it, it just... You know, it, it's just there, you know. They, could, they, they just could see that, that, that shield that Yahweh has given us. They don't even try it no more. Jehovah Witness, they see it. They look at me knocking on everybody's door, and I come to the door just, just so I could get them. <laughs> just so I could deal with them. And, 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 and that shield be right there. You, are. you have a lovely day, ma'am. I say, you do too, you know what I mean? <laughs> That mean don't come this way, you know what I mean? But that's the love that Yahweh has for us, and we need to we need to recognize that. It don't take that much to stand up and kill you all. It it, it you know it's it's a hard thing. You didn't already you you didn't already pass the test when you got rid of the Lord God of Jesus Christ. Now how hard is it for you just to be obedient? He gave you the tool. You got rid of the most important thing that was, that had you bound in bondage it was Lord God and Jesus Christ. You got rid of that. Allah, Buddha, whatever they want to call it. You know, and then you right back want to play church again? No. You know that deception is not good. You, you, we know it's two mysteries in operation. We already know that. But we need to recognize what that seventh aim is. 
to discern, not to be deceived by Lucifer. You know, in all the shapes and forms that he comes in, you know what I mean? Whatever you want to call him, you know what I mean? He's given us the two, and we need to recognize that. You know what I mean? Hold each other up. Love, love. You know, that word is so huge in the Bible when you look at it. I mean, there's so many definitions, and it just takes it and just, just twists it all around. How could you love something and then hurt it? Yahweh loves us unconditionally, and he do not hurt us. We go through our ups and downs, but that's part of his purpose, his pattern, and his plan. And we are going to go. It's a repetition. It overturns. It overturns. They went through it. We have to go through it. All through the ages and dispensation, we are not exempt from that. We just got to know where we stand at and what age we are in. Because it is life after death. It's not a physical, but it's so glorious. It is so glorious. And Yahweh give us an insight of just little things that we see. You know what I mean? Little things. You know, I, I was telling my brother, I said, just the way we was going, going back and forth, to it, 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 it was just a why. And I just noticed that how Yahweh just... Just, I mean, everything you travel, it's a why, it's a why, it's a why. He's speaking. It's in his creation. It's in everything. You can't escape it. You can't escape it. I don't care what you draw, what you look at, it, it forms a why. You know, and it's just, it's just so pretty that the insight that he give you on just on a daily basis when you just walk in the street, you know, and you just hear people talking, you know. I am so appreciative and so humble that Yahweh has had, you know, I mean, just took me out of that. Because I had an attitude in the church world. I really, truly did because I, they didn't give me what I wanted, it, you know. <laughs> but they were trying to take my money. You know, the little money that my mother used to give me, you know, and I just couldn't understand why they, was, they wanted to do that. You know, if they say, you know, God is spirit, what spirit need with my money? <laughs> you know? That was a hard thing, you know, and then just when he just just took me out and, and, and gave me that invitation, sent that invitation to me. He sent that invitation through a vessel to me, you know. You know, come here what I have to say, you know, the love I have for you. We came in class in New Orleans and I haven't stopped. I rode three, four buses to get to class every day. It didn't stop me. It didn't stop me. And I prayed and asked him to just open up my understanding on what he wanted me to know. He brought me through a journey. Like the children of Israel, he brought me through that journey. Coming from out of Katrina, from New Orleans, he brought me through that. I witnessed this. I witnessed this. I witnessed his love. And I was not afraid. I witnessed his love. You know what I mean? I said, this is not what he had for me. He brought me into class not to lose me, but to give me nothing but unconditional love that he has for me. And I want to return that love by being obedient the best I can. He know my ups and downs. He know my weakness. He know this. He, he knows me. If anybody else don't know me, he know me. You know, I am a product of him. You know what I mean? So, you know, I don't wave, I'm, you know, I'm not winning no popularity contest with nobody. That's not going to save my soul. You know, I love each and every one of y'all, and I, I hope the love is genuine from y'all to me. You know, but if not, that's up to you and Yahweh. That's with you and Yahweh. Because I'm going to express my love, and it's genuine. It's nothing fake. It's genuine. Because my father had loved me, and he said the first commandment that he wanted is to love one another. And that's what we need to do. Hold each other up. And just believe that whatever he has given us, it's enough. It's enough. Because he opens our understanding every day that we still breathe his name. He gives us an understanding of something that we, I mean, I could sit here and I'd and I be pondering with things. and Go to class. You'll get it. Go to class, you'll get it. And I be thinking about it, and I say, well, I don't understand this here, but, you know, I understand it, but 
You know, I'm trying to see where the witness is at. You know what I mean? It, 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 it has to go to the path. And if it don't, you know, you, you, leave, you leave it alone till Yahweh show you. If it don't go to it, he will never show you. Don't go. It's not in his purpose and pain, plan. So we just need to let that go. You know what I mean? So now, pounding every day I come to class. I don't even have to be here. It just, he's giving me that insight, what I need to know. And that scripture is saying we need to be diligent to each other. We need to love one another. We need to know that whatever he's giving us, we need to stand on it. I mean, and firm too. Because that bad boy is working. Like Lawrence said, he got a, he got a, we got a bullseye on our back. He's he throwing them dogs. He throwing them. He in your every waking thought and everything. And we just need to be sure that we know that we are of Yahweh. Through Yahshua the Messiah. We know we are. And nobody can take that away from us. You know what I mean? You know, I didn't see, it just said me how people that came into class that was in when I came in. That's no longer here. He give you the ears, he give you the eyes, but everybody don't see and everybody don't hear. And this is delusion going on and he could give it to you. That's the test of his love. I'm going to see if you truly love me. That's the test of love. And he bring me through that test. That's the test of love, you know. I could be ready to break out and do something. I said, man, I'm about to do something. Yahweh just stopped me dead in my track. You know what I mean? And it's always something that Dora wants to do. It's not what Yahweh put in my heart to do, you know, because you know what? He stops me. Every, every time, you know what I mean? It, yeah. My brother said, you just wake up to, to, to deal with somebody. I said, yeah, because if they come with some foolishness, I got them. And then I look around and said, boy, I can't get nobody today. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, every kid, you know, I do. I'll be waiting to get somebody. But I can't get them. I say, well, y'all, well, let me go on back to my books. Yeah, let me go back to the transcript. You know, since I can't. Since I can't get a soldier out there, you know what I mean, you know? Because, you know, you, when, they, when, you, when you don't want them to say anything, they say something, you know? Oh, God is good. Bless you, baby. Love you and all that. And I say, do they really know what they say? And then the first thing they say, Lord God, Jesus Christ, and then they say, hallelujah. Wait a minute. Yes. You, do you know what you say? You know what I mean? You know, so I had one that I just really went, you know, hallelujah. You look at that word, baby, boy. You know, what is you giving praise to? And you still doing what you're doing, you know what I mean? You know, you have no love for nobody because you wouldn't be doing what you're doing, you know what I mean? So, you know, it, it's just so important, that word love, 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 love. Don't use it so loosely and you don't know what it is. You know, stop throwing it out there. Cause I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna prove to you. I'm gonna make you prove to me that you love. You know what I mean? You know what that word love is. Stop saying it because a lot of people say it and don't mean it. You know they just want to say something. You know what I mean? You know, and it's just irritating that they do this. But we 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 know where our love stands at, and where it's at. It's the love of this gospel and the truth. That what we said at the end. Our watch word is peace. In our slogan, they'll speak the truth. And we got to leave, we got to throw it, we got to drop the chips where they fall and just let them fall. Because we need to know that Yahweh has given us something that no man could have explained this to us unless it was a revelation. We have visions every day, but a revelation is what you need. And if it's not coming from Yahweh, no good. No good. I dream every day, and I still don't know what I dream. I'd be like, what I dream? I know I was dreaming something, and I can't even make heads or tail of it. Because it wasn't in righteous. That's why, you know what I mean? It's always something in the past, you know? I'm leaving, leave that in the past. Yahweh brought you from that, you know? I, you, know it, it, you know, it's just amazing how they're just trying to get me back. Oh, I found your house in New Orleans. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> How many years I've been in New Orleans? All my life. And I only gave 15 to Florida. So that's a long time, and I'm 68 years old. That's a long time. I've been in New Orleans all my life, and guess what? Don't change nothing. My heart is where the gospel is at. 
and the gospel is not in New Orleans. It's not being preached. Yahweh took care of that. On a day, you know, he took care of that. You know what I mean? He took care of that when Hurricane Katrina went through that. That was a, a going through, a going through, you know. That was a bondage. We didn't see it, but it was a bondage that we was in. A delusion that he put us in because it had so many people in that class. You didn't know. Whew. I mean, you had to get there early just to get a seat. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. You had to get there early just to, and that was a big place. Mm -hmm. You know? But Yahweh took it apart. He took it apart. He won't let you know, you know, you say you got love. I'm going to see where you love. And those that left, I could talk to a few of them now, and they're not in class. And they have classes where they're at. See, he give you something, and he take it away from you. You got to be careful what you ask for. You know, he'll take it away from you. He had them in class just to see was they diligent enough to understand and believe and just not following behind a person and, and, and just saying things. Yeah, I can repeat things too. But if I don't understand it, why am I repeating it? I repeat things that I understand, that Yahweh give me an understanding for. I, I might see it, but, you know, it's not something that I can repeat. You know what I mean? If I don't understand it, I can't repeat it. But if you're going on somebody else's coattail, this is not, it's not that. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. This is a marriage. This is a ceremonial marriage that Yahweh, one-on-one. -on -one. We are all collected as one, but it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a personal thing with him. And that's where we need, we, that's where it need to be at, right there. You know what I mean? I love y'all dearly, but you're not my salvation. You're not my salvation. And I respect that. Love you dearly, but I'm going for one thing. You know, I want that promise. I want that promise that he promised way back there. I want it. And I'm looking forward to it. Because I'm tired of trying to make up this here. You know, this, 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 this here, this here, where you are. Every day you got to do the same thing. You know what I mean? You got to wash your clean your dresses, <laughs> all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? You know, you know it, it's a headache. But you know what? It's a journey that I don't mind taking. You know, it's a journey that he brings us to. The, it just leads up to him. So it is life after death. And it is beautiful, you know. And we just need to hold each other up. Don't waver in this. If you don't understand it, ask Yahweh. He will give you that revelation if he wants you to have it. Mm -hmm. It's not at your time. It's at his time. It, 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 this is his. And it, it's going to run its course whether you want to, it, want to believe it or not. It's going to run its course. You know, we just need to know where we stand and who really is truly our father. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to know. At this day and age, it is not time to just slack up and throw the towel in. No. No, we did that. We believed what the church world told us. We, we, under that Lord God, Jesus Christ, we believed it. We believed, believed it so much that we can't, some of the people can't even get rid of the name. You try to tell it to them and they will kill you. The whole on to Lord God and Jesus Christ. And you, I mean, they, <clears throat> they won't even speak to you no more. You know, I done lost a lot of friends, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm not for here for no popularity contest, never was. Not even in the church world. You know, it didn't matter. Because, you know, you ain't gonna never get everybody like either way it go. So it, it really doesn't matter. But the only one that I want to know that I truly love him is Yahweh. The, you know, this gospel and what he has shown me. And that, that that's it. That's it. Everything else, got step behind. You know, but that's the way we need to know that, you know, this is where we need to be. And it's not just in this classroom, it's what's in our heart. That's where we are being judged with our heart, our heart intent, you know. That spirit is in our heart and in our mind. That's the way we need to be at. That's all we need to have, you know what I mean? And, and you know what, it, it, it's going to run its course, and it's going to be great. 
you know, it's going to be great. You know, you had to worry about none of that, looking at me no more, and none of that. You know, so, you know, let's just, just, just hold fast in what Yahweh has given us. It's a journey. It's a journey. But it was also a journey when we was out there in the church world, too. And it's still going to be a journey because that's his purpose. It overturns. It overturns. It overturns. And we are not, like I said, we are not exempt from that. You know? And I just thank him that he has keep, have kept me, really, into the gospel. And I haven't strayed away. Because it's easy to do that. All that distraction is out there. You know, you got to, that's what I say, you got to stay focused, you know. And just know that Yahweh has us through Yahshua Messiah. And don't never forget that. It's the love. It's the love that he has shown us. So I hope someone got something out of what I have said. This is what's been on my heart and mind. Just love each other. Hold each other up regardless of what goes on. We need this. We need each other. We are, we, are, we are small, but we are many. Look at that. We are many. And we have the truth. And we, I mean, we standing firm. You know, I just look at the, at the people. I mean, we don't care what go on. We are here. Every day the doors are open, Yahweh permits us. We are here. You know, through the storm, the rain, the weather, what we are here. Because we know the truth is here. And it's the love of the brother and the truth that keeps us here. You know what I mean? And with those words, I see just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lador. Our next speaker, I'd like to introduce Dr. Sherry Williams. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Again. Excuse me. It's always a pleasure to be here. And um, as Ladora's mentioned, you know, to, to know anything about our Creator, um, excuse me, and to be able to worship Yahweh as He really is and actually exists. And we're here at a special place and a special time in this universe entirely, you think about it. And <clears throat> let's get uh, let's get some aims. Because Dr. Kinley, you know this teaching is not the product of a man. It's the product of the Holy Spirit. And it's Yahweh that wants us to know him. He wants us. We've been told all our lives prior to coming in here, we couldn't know God. We couldn't know anything about God until we died. And that is the exact opposite of the way it is. We must know Yahweh before we take off this flesh. And he's given us a way to do that. Through the preaching of this gospel and at the end of this age, sending down this man, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, here, placing his spirit within him and instructing him to do what? What did he say when Yahweh asked him what was he going to do with this? Teach. This is a school and not a church. And we cannot be playing church. We've come out of that, as Miss Lador has mentioned. She mentioned that. We were in church and steeped in that stuff. The children of Israel were down here 400 years steeped in the traditions and concepts and thoughts and opinions and theories of the, another nation. We have not physically ourselves been anywhere 400 years as a, individually. And still, I know I'm steeped in my method, and I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but I'm steeped in it. Methodist and Baptist and Catholic and a little bit here and a little bit there. 
and I don't know what it is. Thanks be to Yahweh, he's taken us out of that. And he showed us the way to go about doing it, too. It wasn't left up to haphazard. Oh, and it's so interesting, because <laughs> I was watching a speaker the other night, and it was right hitting home. You know, he was uh, showing how to go in and get an understanding of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I did exactly what he said. I opened the Bible to Genesis 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. I started reading. Closed it up when I got to who be got who. Then I tried it again. Ma ma go to Matthew. Open it up. Where do we get? Who be got who? Closed it up. Then I tried it again. Open the Bible wherever it opened. Just let it fall open wherever it would fall. In. Try and what do you get? Who be got who? <laughs> Yahweh. It, you know, it's comical <laughs> to some extent that what he takes us through and what he shows us and how he goes about to show us how, how hard-headed and how stiff-necked. You know, you talk about the children of Israel being a stiff-necked people. Yeah. You know, it's no different. It's no different now than it was uh, 2,000 years ago. Let's get, I want to get, um, I want to get... Four and I want to get eight. So these are the aims that Dr. Kinley, um, I, I don't know, don't let me say that because I haven't done that research. So if Dr. Kinley established all these aims or not, I, I don't, he did. he did. All right, thank you. There's a witness because that's the thing about this. I, I don't want to say something yeah. that there's not witnesses for. Okay, go on because that's what we had. Go on. Fourth, um, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. To encourage and, and promote. promote the study. So there is something here to study. You know, Yahweh is giving it to us. And we understand, I hope we do. Let me say that this way. It doesn't come that way, studying up on it. But there's got to be something in there for Yahweh to work with, yeah. if I can say it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not working with an empty brain. Mm -mm. He made these. He's, he created this, yeah. all of this, yeah. to put something in there, right, to inhabit yeah. th this tabernacle. So it's not empty. It's not just fruitless. It's not just haphazard and there's a way a prescribed way that Yahweh has given to lay this gospel down there is the children of Israel down here in Egypt they couldn't come up out of Egypt haphazardly Yahweh had them five abreast you know he had them harnessed he had them coming up a certain way when he gave them this tabernacle what did he do he made sure to place and I know I'm probably going to be all over the place, but he made sure to place his spirit in the workmen so they couldn't do any old thing yeah. they wanted to do. No, because man, I got an opinion. Cynthia's got a different one. Tara's got a different one. Joel's got something else. All coming from different backgrounds and experiences. So no, no, we want to be of one mind, one mind with Yahweh. We can't be all haphazard and disjointed. It's not like that. All the vessels in our body are placed there in a, sp a particular uh, pattern. All of us, right? All of, our, all of us have our, our uh, small intestines and large intestines. All of us have our heart. All of us are a our heart, our aortic heart, right? They're all lined up in a certain way. So we're not just doing anything haphazardly. And the thing about it is it's hard sometimes and we kick against the pricks to follow Yahweh Paul did it he's you know Yahweh asked him why are you kicking against the pricks you know but and and I know I did it too I did I you know Yahweh I told I tell you guys all the time you know I chose not to have children he gonna give me two and I'm like, what's going on here? No, I don't want this. No, I don't want this. And I made no bones about it. I didn't want it. And finally, <laughs> finally, you know, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. And then he took care of everything. 
He took care of everything. Mm -hmm. I can't. That's what built my faith in this. Because I didn't worry. I never worried not one day. Two small children, two and four years old. Can you imagine? I'm in my 30s. What do you think I'm doing? Enjoying life, right? <laughs> I'm having a ball. I'm working. I'm doing what I want to do. Going where I want to go. Bang. All that stops. You have children where I go, they go. Ain't <laughs> Yahweh was like, all right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, you know. And I know I'm all over the place, and that's not where I was going. But yes, okay. go on. Um, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith. To earnestly contend. So what is that? We have to contend for something, right? Yeah. A contention is that there's a fight, yeah. right? Yeah. There's, a, there's a battle yeah. going on. Go on. Which was once delivered to the sons or children of Yahweh. Okay, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And one thing about it, Yahweh has built up each and every one of us. He's built up our faith in him by the experiences he's put each and every one of us through. And they could be all different, but they all are going to witness to one, one to Yahweh. They're all going to witness to Yahweh. It, and that's the bottom line. And Yahweh has set this thing up so for us to be able to understand him. And Dr. Kinley, and I remember coming into class and Dr. Kinley and hearing Dr. Kinley say that it's easy. It's one, two, three. A child can understand it. One, two, three. One, two, three. A, B, C. A child can understand it. You know, and that's, he's given it to us that way. So let's go to a scripture reading and let's pick up 1 John 5 and um, there's so much in here and there's so much going through my mind, but um, let's go to 1. Let's just start at 1. 1 John 5 Everyone that loveth him, that beget, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of Yahweh, when we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? Uh -huh. But he that believes that Yahshua the Messiah is the son of Yahweh. Yeah. And how do we believe that? That Yahshua the Messiah is the son of Yahweh. Yahweh, um, how do we believe that? So let's go and, and look at what we have been given. Let's go to, first, uh, to John 5 and 39. Let's go to Luke 24 and, and um, 25. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. And I'm sorry I'm calling them out, but I know we're on a three-speaker format. So um, let's also go to 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and Isaiah 8 and 20. Because this is how Yahweh has given us to understand him. This is the way. And to know, you know, and you think about this thing. This, this here boggles my mind sometimes, but I know it's the purpose of Yahweh. This was given to the Jews and the Jews only. Mm -hmm. And they missed it. They missed it. They didn't understand it. It was talked about how Yahshua was going to come in. He was going to be born of the Virgin Mary. All the stuff that, that the prophecies that were taking place and they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. He showed them again. He showed them again when he brought them, the children of Israel out here into the wilderness and he showed them this promised land, the land that he had promised them. They didn't believe him. Over and over again, they're just slapping at him in the face. They don't believe him. Yes. So this is the way that Yahweh, so here, to find out something about Yahshua. John 5 and 39. And who's speaking here? Yahshua. Go on. Ye search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, 
and they are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. So these scriptures, and what are the scriptures? We, I know I didn't even know. I thought it was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. Come to find out Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not even written at the time the Messiah is speaking these words. So what are the scriptures? We come to find out that the scriptures are the old part of the Bible, what people can, uh, uh, refer to as the Old Testament. And that consists of the first five books of Mon Moses, which are the law, and the other 34 books of the Bible, which are the prophets, comprising 39 books. And in, um, I know it's in Hebrews, and I don't know where else it is, but Yahshua says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Where? Ten in the up, I know, okay. The volume of the book. It is written of me, not me. It is written of Yahshua. Yes, you can call it. Yes, please, real quick. Yep. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to thy will, O Yahweh. Uh huh. So the first five books of the Bible are the law, which are attributed to Moses. Your fly leaf says the first book of Genesis, or the first book of Moses, Genesis, or something. I might, am I doing it backwards? The first book of Moses, Moses called Genesis. Yeah. Yep. All right. So this is contributed to Moses, and these are the prophets. We have um, Joshua through Malachi, you know. And then, you know, Yahweh gives us the witnesses. He didn't leave it there, you know. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Obadiah. He put his name right within those men. Daniel, you know, to, to witness and to testify. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So, okay, so Yahshua sends us back. He says, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, Luke. Luke. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, now, this is after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. And I'm sorry, the first one in John, he's speaking before his death, burial, and resurrection. And he's telling them the same thing. He doesn't change. I am Yahweh, Malachi, and I change not. So we can't be tossed to and fro. We can't wonder about, well, is it this way? Is it that way? We don't have to do that now anymore. Go on. Jeremiah 31, 31 also. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. Yep, he expounded in, unto them the things concerning himself. And that is how he was going to come in, how he was going to die, how he was going to have to go through a burial and go through a resurrection. What else? First Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, now this is Paul talking. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye receive, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures. Paul's talking about those scriptures. He's not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's talking about those first five books of the Bible and the other 34 books. Go on. And that he was buried and he rose again according to the third day. Sorry. Yeah. Rose again on the third <laughs> day. According to the scripture. Yeah. Okay. So we have a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And I'm just going to abbreviate death, burial, resurrection. When? On the third day. All right. Can you go to some of the others? Where are you at? Isaiah? Jeremiah. Je Isaiah 8 and 20. Mm hmm. Hold Jeremiah for me, please. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They have to speak according to this word. Otherwise, there is no light, and that light is synonymous with truth. 
we can say. There is no truth in them. And we know in this world there's lies and there's truth. We know that. We do it. We're a product of them, both. <laughs> right? Lies and truth. Anyone in here, you don't even have to raise your hand, has never told a lie. Right? So we know that there are lies and truth. So we want to be a product of the truth, though. That's what Yahweh is doing now for us, making us products of the truth, if I can say it that way. So here he's saying to the law and to the testimony, the law, first five books of the Bible, and the testimony or the prophets. They are testifying. These 34 prophets here are witnesses or prophesying to the scriptures, what Paul is talking about, to Yahshua the Messiah, him coming in, his death, his burial, his resurrection on the third, so that that's how you know he's the one. Because look at, <laughs> we did the research on this. We studied these churches. How many of them were there? We, 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 didn't, we didn't even exhaust them. We didn't even come close to exhausting the theories, concepts, opinions, and denominations, and sects, and cults, and whatever you want to call them. You know, out here, we didn't even, we, I, I, we didn't even scrape the surface of them. We studied a few of the major ones that you hear about, you know? But there are so many out here, under every rock, actually. You know? You got two or three churches on the same, in a block. In a block. Why is that if we're all, if they're all, pray, you know, they're, they're all worshiping God? How can there be all these divisions? And they're not all saying the same thing. I grew up Methodist, then I went to Baptist, I've gone to Catholics, I, I've gone to Holy and Sanctified, Holy and Roly, oh my gosh, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> all day long, like, ah, oh. for what? What? You're, and nowhere in there does it say that. Nowhere. But Yahweh has given us a way. So to the law and to the testimony. That's what Isaiah is saying. To the law and to the testimony. So those first five books of the Bible and those 34 books of the prophet are gonna, prophets are going to be testifying to the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. They're going to be showing forth too how Yahshua and Yahweh if I can say it this way, are one and the same. We, you know, we're not looking at a trinity here. We're not looking at all these as being separate people or separate entities or separate whatever people think. Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and Yahshua, these three are one, and that's in our scripture. So how do we get to see that through the preaching of this gospel and the scriptures? Was What else is called? Jeremiah 31, 31. So we find out through Jeremiah here that Yahweh, going back to Moses, I'm sorry, I'm going to have you hold that. So going back to Moses with Yahshua the Messiah, he said it twice. He said it before his death burial, he said it many times, but he said it before his death burial resurrection, he said it after his death burial resurrection. You have to begin at Moses. So we go back down here with Moses into Exodus, Moses being born under a death decree, um, Moses being uh Put, placed in that ark and placed in the river and drawn out by Pharaoh's daughter, the very one relation to the very one who sought his life. So um, here we have those principles of a death, a burial of Moses, and I know I'm not pointing to the right thing, but a death, a burial of Moses, and a resurrection when he's, when he's drawn up out of that ark. And he's raised in Pharaoh's household for some 40 years. 40 years. He's a prince. So he's, he's, he's got everything at his, at his um, fingertips. So he goes out. He sees his, um, an Egyptian and a Hebrew quarreling. He kills the Egyptian, buries him in the sand. He goes out the next day. He sees two Hebrews fighting, quarreling. So he in, tries to intercede. One says to him, who has made you a prince? He, Yahweh did. Well, Yahweh did. Who's made him a prince? He could have, Yahweh, he didn't know it at the time. Moses didn't know it at the time, but Yahweh made him a prince. But so he knows the thing is known. So he, he flees up out of the land of Egypt 
and Yahweh takes him out into the land of Midian. And there he's doing some things. He's out here for some 40 years. And then Yahweh calls him because it's time now. See, that's the thing. We have, I, let me say, let me put it on me. A hard time with time. It's, we got to get away. Let me say it on me. I got to get away from the thing with time. It's Yahweh's time. It's just like with, with the, the situation. It's Yahweh's time. It's not our time. Yahweh's going to dictate. Doesn't I don't know I'm all over the place. In our body, he's placed that, that law, that master law, right? The pituitary gland mm -hmm. that secretes those hormones. Mm -hmm. That is the master gland. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is the master gland, if I can put it that way. And it's going to dictate when and where things are going to happen, right? That gland dictates to us when we're going to go through puberty, what, how tall, how short, how whatever we're going to be, right? <clears throat> Yahweh is going to dictate that. So when it's time, 40 years now, Moses is 80 years old, 80. He calls him up here to this burning bush. Moses is given Yahweh's name in this burning bush. This is the first time. It wasn't time. All those years before had gone by, but it wasn't time. Now it's time. Yahweh wants us to know him. So he gives Moses his name here at the burning bush, and he's gonna, he tells Moses he's going to go back down into this land of Egypt, and he's going to deliver the children of Israel up out of bondage. They've been down here some 400 years. It's time now. It's time to come up, up out of that bondage and to know, to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. It's a, and he takes them through a series of um, plagues down here in Egypt. A, ten devastating plagues um, are poured out on this land of Egypt. That ninth plague is the plague of darkness. And it's dark, so dark that you can't see the hand in front of your face. That's likened unto us in the world prior to coming into class. We, I know I was in total, total, total. I can't even say a little bit. Total darkness. Total. You know, and we have witnesses in the earth plane. We have a man sitting in class who has vision, you know, uh, you know, has a um, vision deficit, say, physically so, but not spiritually so. So it's not about, and that's the beauty of this, it's not about the physical. But we, Yahweh, Romans 1, 19 and 20, we have to learn, we, we learn by the physical. The physical reveals the spiritual. So it, total darkness down here. And Yahweh tells them the, the prescribed way to get out of this mess is to take out a lamb. To take the blood of that lamb, they're going to strike the top of the door, the two side posts dipping from a basin of blood. And that is their salvation. And who would have thought? They didn't think it, right? Because Pharaoh thought, oh, they're going to rise up with another nation. They could join another nation and overthrow us and, and, and free themselves. But that wasn't the way Yahweh had it set up or had it planned. So they take out a lamb. They take the blood and put it on the top of the door, the two side posts dipping from a basin of blood. This is the prescribed way. This is the way that Yahweh gave them. And this is pointing out, going to point to Yahshua. When he comes in, what he's going to go through, how he's going to prove who he is. So um, they had to be ready. So Yahweh brings them up out of Egypt. They come to the Red Sea. They fear. Yahweh poured out 10 devastating plagues on this land. Still unbelief. Still unbelief. What do you got to do? What, are, what are, you know, and these are for us, right? That's what he said. These are our examples. This is our admonition. I think the Bible says that somewhere in there, right? It says it. This is our learning. So you think if they went through this and he's showing us 10 devastating plagues and they still did not believe. They still doubted Yahweh. Didn't have faith. Didn't believe him. 10 devastating. He showed them. Three of them were poured out on the uh, Israel also, and then the other seven were not. It was just the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So he separated them. He showed them. He separ I'm calling you out, my son. Yeah. They still don't believe him. Don't believe Yahweh after all this. But yet they were looking for him. They were supposed to be waiting for him. Yeah. That's what they were told. Yeah. Joseph said that. 
Yahweh's surely going to visit you. Yeah. You know, and when he does, you bring, make sure you take me up out of here. Yeah. Bring my bones. Oh, mm-hmm. But I know time is short. But so I want to get to, so here, this is pointing to a death, a burial here, because they come through the water. Yahweh parts the, he's still merciful. He's still, and and that's the beauty of it. He's still merciful, sitting on a mercy seat. So he parts the waters of the Red Sea. The children of Israel go through on dry ground, and they come out here into the wilderness. So we have a death, a burial, because it talks about in 1 Corinthians, the 10 chapter, how they were all buried Mm -hmm. in the sea and in the cloud unto Moses. So we have a death, a burial. They come out here, they're resurrected. And this, they went a three days journey. Yahweh has this thing tight, a three days journey up and out of Egypt to the wilderness of Sinai, or to the Red Sea, I think it was, right? To the Red Sea. So a three days journey. So Yahweh is showing the death, the burial, the resurrection on the third. This is in the law and the prophets. Um, Also, there's witnesses. But what we want to see is how Yahweh, in our scripture reading, is these three are one, and they're going to agree in one. So let's get our scripture reading. And I know I'm doing death, burial, resurrection. We also have blood, water, spirit, and a principle of four or 40. So here with the children of Israel, so here we can also have that principle of the blood because the blood was on the door. They come to the Red Sea, the water, and they're following a phenomenal cloud, which is Yahweh, which is spirit. The moderator said Yahweh in his pure spirit state. He's incomprehensible and inscrutable. So we also have that principle, blood, water, spirit. And we know that the children of Israel are out here for 40 years because of unbelief, all unbelief, everything they've done, everything. And Yahweh over and over and over. How many witnesses do we need? We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. 40 years. So we have blood, water, spirit. So Yahshua is going to come in uh, Matthew 5 and 17 because we had this wrong didn't I know I did didn't understand it I thought yeah Jesus Christ came in to institute a Christian way of life to show me how to walk in Jesus's footsteps although I certainly was not going to get up on a cross and die for anyone but I was going to walk in Jesus's footsteps Matthew 5 and 17 think not that I am come to destroy the law or think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but But to to fulfill. So you see here again, think not. So don't think it. That's what (laughs) don't think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy them. He's come to fulfill them. And he's the only one that can. He's the only one because he was sent by Yahweh. If I can say it that way, as Yahweh himself, we know stepping down to, to, he's carrying out his purpose. You want a job done, you're going to do it yourself. The creator's not going to leave it up. And he showed us witnesses with this, with the tabernacle. He didn't leave it up to the, the, the children of Israel to build this, to construct this. He put his spirit in the workmen to make sure it was constructed as to his specifications. But go on. So where are we? The scripture. So he didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill. So, you know, you you were being told that, oh, you got to do this. You have to do that. No, you don't have to do any of that. It's not it wasn't set up for us to be able to even do that stuff. The children of Israel out here had 600 and some odd laws and ordinances. They couldn't keep one. So they broke them all. You you can't you, you break one, you break them all. We had 10. We want to try to follow 10, and we weren't doing that. We weren't too good at doing that, even, trying to follow 10, because it wasn't meant. We couldn't do it. It wasn't meant to be done. It was meant to show us that we need a Savior. But go on. So let's go to the scripture, 1 John, where we left off. 5 and I think 3rd verse or 2nd second, second or 3rd verse. First John. And I know I'm chopping up, guys, and I'm all over the place, but I hope that... Um, it's it's kind of. I'm gonna start the second. You can pick it. Go to the third there. Just. First yeah. John five and three. Mm-hmm. For this is the love of Yahweh that we keep His commandments, uh-huh. and His commandments are not, not grievous. Mm-hmm. For whatsoever is born of 
born of Yahweh, overcometh the world. And but Yahweh put an end to all of that. See, with, with that death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, it put an end to all of this. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah 31, 31. It put an end to all of this. So we keep his commandments because now it's not like, you know, there, there's not like 10 commandments and all that stuff to follow. Not saying you want to go out and do anything you want to do because we're going to be governed and guided by the spirit. That's our, what's up here now, the, hopefully dwelling in us. Yahweh, the spirit, righteousness. Go on. Jeremiah 31, 31. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them up out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So, see, this is what he's talking about. He did not come to destroy this. Mm -hmm. He came to fulfill it. So, here, Jeremiah, he's going to make a new covenant, though, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And it's not, not <laughs> going to be like this old covenant. And what do you have out here in the world? You have the old covenant. Every single organization out here is worshiping or practicing the old covenant. Every single one. So every single one that has Jesus has come is lying. They're lying because he said he came to fulfill it, to end it, to stop it. Mm -hmm. So how can that be if they're still doing it? They don't even realize we don't we know that it's not even realized what the old covenant was. But that's a whole another thing. But he came to fulfill it and bring it to an end. And that's exactly what he did. So he's ushered in a new covenant. So in um, go now to first John where you picked up the third verse. For this is the love of Yahweh, uh -huh. that we keep his, his commandments, commandments, and his commandments are not uh -huh. For whatsoever is born of Yahweh overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believes that Yahshua is the son of Yahweh. This is he that came by water and blood, Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. And this, and it is the spirit that bears witness, because the spirit is true. Uh -huh. For there are three things that bear witness: the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three, and these three agree in one. Yeah, no. no I'm out holy, holy name. name. It's got to be King James. Okay. Yep. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they're a little bit different. We know they read a little bit different. I would John 5 and 7. Okay. Uh -huh. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Well, what's Holy Ghost? Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Okay. Holy yes. Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And Yahshua, when he was walking around on the earth plane, what did he keep saying? I and my Father are one. Not three. One. I and my Father are one. And that's what he wants us to be, one with him. I and you and me and, um, and you and me. So are one. But him and the Father are one. First John 5 and 7, there are three that bear uh, record. Is it record? There are there three, are three that, that bear record, record in, heaven. in heaven. So we have the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's quickly get um, John 17. Is it no? Um, John 14 and 26, the Comforter. Showing who the Holy Spirit is. Because, you know, I know I didn't even know the Holy Spirit had a name. I didn't know that. I didn't know the Holy Spirit was Yahshua prior to coming in the class. You know, I thought it was some ghost, actually. The Holy, I thought it was a ghost. I didn't want, who would want anything to do with that? 
Nobody. You watch, I watch Casper. I mean, <laughs> that was the extent of my ghostly endeavors, if I can say it that way, you know? So you, we, you know, had these theories, concepts, and opinions that this gospel has just torn down. They've broken them down. We talked about that, um, that um, Daniel in his vision and that uh, man, um, and I'm breaking it up now because I'm, you know, but how it was torn down, how the stone was cast at its feet and just, it crumbled. It just crumbled. It tore down the thoughts, the theories, the concepts, all our opinions. And that's the thing about this. And I, you know, I, I came into class and people said, you know, people were like, everything's got to go. Well, I didn't get it. At first, I didn't get it. No, I know something about God. I've been taught as a kid. I've been going to church all my life, you know, and even, you know, over time, even and still to this day, there are things being torn down and peeled away. And Yahweh is revealing himself. Right. And that's that product of circumcision, you know, peeling away the layers to reveal the spirit. Right. So what do I have? John 4, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. So I just wanted to pick up that the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, who's the Father's going to send in whose name? Yahshua's name. So showing again, these three are one. We are come passed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So there are three that bear record in the earth. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three agree in one. They're not going to be all different. Like the Catholic Church talks about, oh, um, the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father, whatever. It's all confusion. It's not that way. These three are one, and they're going to agree in one. And then there are going to be three that bear witness. Witness. We are compassed about. Can you get that? And I think it's in Hebrews, I want to say, I think. Um, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. But there are three in the earth plane that are going to bear witness. So when you see these witnesses, they're going to point to Yahshua. And the thing, the beauty of it is he's showing it to us to this very day. We see blood, water, spirit 40 in the earth plane or a principle of four throughout the earth plane. There are so many events that have happened and I haven't followed up on them. I've been getting little tags on my phone about um, planes going down and, you know, yeah. and people, can't be, you know, and that's a, you know, air. When you're talking about air, you're talking spirit. You're looking at, you know, things or witnessing the spirit. Now, I haven't broken them down or looked at them closer, but they're going to testify to Yahshua, blood, water, spirit. He went through a baptism. Um, he's, he's the sacrifice. So we have blood. He went through a baptism with John the Baptist, water. John saw the dove descending upon him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Blood, water, spirit. We have those principles. All of them. And then he's sent into the wilderness for 40 days. All of this witnessing. There's many more. Yahweh didn't leave it there. We have blood. We have the precept upon precept, line upon line. Blood, water, spirit. 40. Death, burial, resurrection on the third. All the principles, Yahweh didn't leave it up to us to figure it out and do anything haphazardly. He's given us everything we need down in this earth plane. The witnesses to witness to Yahshua the Messiah and that he is our Savior and he's the only one. He's the only one that can do this, that he was sent to fulfill. And something I found interesting, actually, the other night when we had class, um, Wednesday, I think it was, that um, how that Yahshua was still fulfilling, even after his death, burial, or resurrection. And I was like, wow, that 
was, you know, I might have heard it, but it was something I didn't think about before. So Yahweh continuously, continuously is, and the thing, the beauty of it, is he's perfecting our understanding. That's what it is of him, not of us. And like Miss Lador said, that's the thing. Dr. Kinley even said it. He woke up every morning, every morning, and looked at himself in the mirror and had to get rid of the old man every morning. So, it, you, you, and he, he was given this whole kit and caboodle, you know, he was given it all at once, you know, and we're getting it piecemeal, and he says we're better off, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, Yahweh, because he knows, because he knows, he has the witnesses, they didn't believe, they didn't believe, they didn't believe, they didn't believe, you know? We see it in the earth plane. They don't believe. Miss Lador was just talking. You try to talk to somebody. All of us have done it. All of us have tried to talk to friends and family and relatives. They don't believe. So Yahweh, that's the beauty of this, you know. And we have a precious gift. We have a precious gift. And for me, you know, Yahweh has put it on my mind. It's more urgent now than it was even before. You know, and I, since I came into class, it, it's been talked about. We're at the end of the age, and there's a short time left. And I don't know it's because you're getting older that it seems shorter. You know, I guess maybe when you're younger, you think you got all this time, you know? And it's like, you don't. You know, you don't. And, you know, there's so many people that I know, like, they're here today, they're gone today. They're here today, they're gone today. It used to be here today, gone tomorrow. It's no more. Here today, gone today. You know, and they, you know, whatever. So learning about Yahweh, that is, that's what he's put on my heart and mind. That has been my focus. And I'm sorry to take up just a, a, a one more, a few, just two more minutes, Joe, please. You know, it's beautiful that you, some of you have, you can go home and talk to each other about this gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm married. The person is not in class. I'm tired of him, literally, not badly. I love him, but I mean, it's only so much. Yeah. We go out to dinner, we go to a movie, we're done. I can't talk to him about Yahweh. You know, this is it. This is it. Some of you are not are fortunate enough to be able to go home and talk to your partners. You know, uh, we're surrounded. I'm surrounded. I go to school. There's nobody there I can talk to. You know, but I'm not going to sit there, I told you all, and listen to them talk about Jesus, Lord, and God either. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so this is it. This is it. So it's even to me, yeah. to me now, I can't deal, talk to anybody else. It's even, I feel even more pressed yes. to learn and know mm -hmm. whatever Yahweh, and it's what he's putting on my heart and mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's not me. And I'm trying to go with that and follow my cloud, yeah. my cloud. That's what I have to do, and that's what I'm going to be answering to, yeah. me, to yeah. Yahweh yes. for me, yeah. not you, mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And this is what I feel for me that I need, you know, and we have it. Yahweh's given it to us freely. Mm -hmm. We have it here mm -hmm. before us. We have no excuse. Yahweh made it so. Mm -hmm. There is no excuse mm -hmm. for not Knowing him, he says, and uh, the, did I get diligently seek him? The diligently, yeah. the, the aim, yeah. Yeah. the aim. Uh, the, earnest, yeah. but wasn't it diligent? To earnestly contend for the common yeah. salvation and faith, which was once delivered. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, with that, I'll just say hallelujah. All praises, honor, and glory go to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. And hallelujah. Thank you, Sherry. For our next speaker, I'd like to introduce the Dean of our Ithaca, New York class, Dr. Robert White. Good afternoon, class. Always a pleasure to be in your midst. Um... Let's go back to the scripture lesson and pick it up at uh, at nine. You want to read that the King James? Or the Doesn't Lord? matter. Okay. Oh, nine is past, yeah. If we receive the witness of wow. First John gonna five a, and nine, gonna need a ball cap for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I need a bill. <laughs> okay, go ahead and read it again. I'm sorry to interrupt. First John 5 and 9. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of Yahweh is greater. Mm -hmm. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his son, that he be, he that believe on the son of Yahweh have the witness in him. So, so he, he, or whomever he is, mm -hmm. or her, but we know he's speaking about mankind. Yes. So, we're not leaving the females out. <laughs> or John isn't. If you understand this book. Yes. So, reread that last verse, and I'm going to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. He that believed on the Son of Yahweh has the witness. So, you see what John is saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you believe in the Son of Yahweh, yeah. you got the witness in you. Yeah. Go ahead. He that believes not Yahweh have made him a liar. Mm -hmm. Because he believes not the record that Yahweh, have gave, that Yahweh gave of his Son. Yeah. People don't believe the witness. Mm -hmm. We're coming up on Easter, folks. Yes. Or Passover. <laughs> So we might as well sharpen our pen pencils. I don't know about you, but I've pretty much worn out my eraser. <laughs> Time for a new one. Oh. Go ahead, keep reading. And this is the record that Yahweh has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life. So if you have the Son... Or the Holy Spirit, you know you have life. Yeah. Go ahead. And he that have not the Son of Yahweh have not life. Then you're deader than the doornail. Yeah. Spiritually or psychologically. Yeah. Yeah. And that's already been testified to by the first speaker. Mm -hmm. We all came from that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh. So John's just encouraging. Mm -hmm. There's not an admonishment here. It's an encouragement. So just a reassurement that you have eternal life. You know you don't think the way you used to think. A change has taken place. You don't behave the way you used to behave. A change has taken place. And that not of yourself. When I first came into class, I, 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 I just couldn't believe it. That a man with, with a fifth grade education was spitting out words longer than my arm. And knew the definitions. So, you know, he must have gone to night school or something. Well, oh, you know how a carnal mind thinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. Yes. Have you ever asked the boss something according to his will? And I'm not talking about you need a new Cadillac. No. We're past that. Right. You ask him for a knowledge and an understanding. And that's according to his will. He's just as pleased to give it to you. And you don't have to beg him. You can ask. And he'll give it to you. Let's go to the John. The first chapter. Not first John, but John. John 1 and 1. Pick it up at 12, please. John 1 and 12. Mm-hmm. But as many as received him, mm -hmm. to them gave he power to become the sons of Yahweh. For as, to as many as have received him. Mm -hmm. And we can't receive him without divine intervention. We can't believe this on our own. It's unbelievable to the world. You're a scientist. You've talked to some of the most educated people in the world. Your peers. And what do they think of this? They think I'm foolish. <laughs> <laughs> and he is, he is foolish. Yeah. But in a divine sense. 
We're all fools. Unbelievable. It really is unbelievable without divine help. So to as many as have received him, and he causes us to receive him. We, we understand that. We don't receive him on our own. Has he given, what's that word? Power. Power. It takes power to become a son or daughter of Elohim. And where does the power come from? Read on. To them gave he power to become the sons of Yahweh, mm -hmm. even to them that believe on his name. Even to them that believe on his name. J E S U S didn't do much for me. How about you? But Yahweh is salvation. It was a cold bucket of water in my face. But you know what? We undergo a change. A change in our heart and our mind. A conversion of our soul. A divine metamorphosis. Let's go to Exodus, the... Uh, 29th chapter and pick it up at 38, 39. Now, Sherry just had it read. What was his job description when he came into his ministry? What did he have to do? He had to fulfill. Exodus, please. Mm -hmm. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer between the two evenings. So back here under this old covenant, this old regime, there were sacrifices that had to be made. Mm -hmm. Now the one that we're reading about here in Exodus was a daily sacrifice. Two in the same day, without exception. Mm -hmm. And that was a morning and an evening sacrifice. Right. Now, if he's fulfilling, mm -hmm. you know what time they put him on the cross. In the evening, right? In the morning. You can't even stumble over it. So he's got to fulfill both the morning and the evening sacrifice. So you already know what time they took him down off the cross. See, just by a minor investigation, and knowing what takes place back here under this old covenant, it's Romans 1, 19 and 20. You take the natural to understand the spiritual. And you know that he's got to come in and accomplish that which was written before time. He's got to fulfill... All those sacrifices. So you go back to the 16th chapter of Leviticus. He's got to fulfill the bullock. He's got to fulfill the goat. I'm talking for the sin offering. And the scapegoat. He's got to fulfill the whole thing. Why? Because that was not about then. That was all to point to him. And the more we know about what's in the Old Covenant or the Old Testament, the more we get convinced of, yes, that was my Savior. I wasn't back there 2,000 years ago, neither were you. So what do we have to go on? We have to believe Yahweh's witnesses. And that's what convinces us. And that's what, that's what we hold on to. They don't like me too much up in Ithaca. They tell me I'm too strict. Because I expect them, when they get up here, to know what they're talking about. And use not their witnesses, but Yahweh's witnesses. Get in the scriptures. Show it to me in the sciences. Show it to me in the pattern. If there's a new people person here, how are you going to convince them? What convinced you? Be familiar with what's on these charts. We're teaching a divine vision here. So for that, I'm too strict. Well, then don't like me. I don't care. I'm doing my job. 
I'm, not, I'm going to continue to do it as long as he allow. See? So if, if, <laughs> if they don't like me here for the same reason, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. He made me this way. I'm going to stay this way as long as he keep me. See? And I'm just hoping that I go out with game. I don't want to wind up like some of them in the Institute who used to run this race with us. And now there's this, this nonsense coming out of the mouths. They're under a strong delusion. I, I, I don't want that. I, I want to go home while I still am preaching the, 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 right, the thing right. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to get senile and be sitting there in the back row drooling. You understand? Or be put up here on this floor and have garbage come out because I'm losing my mind. Right. See, but you, you, you can discern the difference. Just like we discern the difference of those that stood up before us and preached this gospel and what's happened to them. And it's not their fault. That's according to Yahweh's purpose. But I just don't want to be numbered with them. So he's got to come in and he's got to be put up on that cross at 9 o'clock in the morning to fulfill that morning sacrifice. Was he the light of the world? Mm -hmm. And in him was all life? Mm -hmm. When the priest in his daily ministration went into the holy place, What's the first thing he had to do at 9 o'clock in the morning? Snuff, the Snuff out that candlestick. <coughs> so, the candlestick snuffed out. The principal's light. What's happening to him while he's on that cross? He's slowly dying. Or bleeding. The life of his that's in his body is slowly diminishing. Now you go back into the prophets and they tell you that there's a day known only unto Yahweh. And we call something like that phenomenal. So you got a phenomenal day back here on the, while he's on that cross. Don't you? Now back in the, in, the, in the Genesis, Yahweh said that a period of light was a period of day. And a period of darkness was a period of night. Mm -hmm. When he died, it says over there in Matthew, the 27th chapter, from the 6th to the ninth hour, what happened? Here you got it right here in the chart. Darkness. You has that, as it were, a solar eclipse. There was darkness, not just in Jerusalem, but all over the face of the earth. Is that what your book reads? What time is the sixth hour? Well, The day began at 6 in the morning. They put him on the cross, third hour, 9 o'clock. Now from the 6th to the ninth hour, you got a period of darkness. So you got light, then a period of darkness, and then light at 3 o'clock. So you've got a day and a night, and a day, and then you've got Saturday morning, a period of light. So you've got a day known only unto Yahweh. You have, as it were, two days on Friday. Then you've got a period of day, and night was Saturday. And then very early in the morning... One day is with Yahweh as 
a thousand years, and a thousand years is just one day. So they put him on the cross on Friday. Friday. One day or a thousand years. Saturday. Two days or two thousand years. Sunday. Very early in the morning or a third part of that day. What does he do? Comes on out of there. Friday, 1,000 years. Saturday, 2,000. And Sunday, 300th part of the day. Friday. It's all, it's all over the place, folks. Mm -hmm. Just familiarize yourself with these charts. Mm -hmm. And you can work with any one of them and show the same principles. Oh, Matthew, I want uh, Jonah, I think it's the 12th chapter, but I'm not sure, get up here, you get brain dead, which is a good thing, yes, uh, Matthew 12 and... Pick it up at 38. Matthew 12 and 38. <clears throat> then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now, were they that? They're asking him for a sign. Little hocus pocus there, Yashua. Come on. <laughs> Show us something. Impress us. Don't realize who they are talking to. We didn't realize who we were in the presence of when we first walked into the door. We had to grow into that awareness. So here he's telling them, because there's already been all these signs all the way down through the law and the prophets. So he's going to give them one. Go ahead. And there shall no sign be given to it, mm -hmm. but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Mm -hmm. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So, you don't believe what's in the law and the prophets. Don't you know that Jonah, did you know and did I know that, that you understand the prophet Jonah was pointing to the Messiah? Absolutely not. Well, neither did they. And then when they get him up here on the cross, after they almost beat him to death, put a crown of thorns on him, put a scarlet robe over him, made him carry his own cross, laid him down, and nailed him to that cross, and then raised it up. What did they say? Well, if you be the Messiah, come down off that cross. Mm -hmm. Still mocking them. Mm -hmm. Is there any mockery going on today in the Institute? Mm -hmm. There certainly is. Mm -hmm. So, in principle, have things changed? Mm -hmm. No, you've got both mysteries. Mm -hmm. Both mysteries. I'll use two fingers. The angelic creation, right? Coming all the way down to the end of this present age. They're running parallel. Both mysteries. And Yahweh's purpose isn't anything but a repetition. So what you see going on with the mystery of iniquity and the mystery of righteousness opposing each other You'll see it repeat all the way down. The manifestations will change. 
but the principle is going to remain the same. Always. I'll give you an example. When I came into the class in the 70s, they were preaching. Some were preaching. You need to get up off of blood, water, and spirit. That's infantile. We've moved on from that. You should be standing in the holy place. And they said they had their spiritual bodies. Yet and still, as foolish as that statement was, they are pushing a grocery cart through a store and they're picking up toilet paper and things to eat. And, you follow what I'm saying? Well, what's that got to do with the spiritual body? See how silly that is? Well, Doc Kinley got up behind him. See? And you read the last two lectures that he gave in December of 75 before he took off the flesh in February of 76. And what did he say? Get up off of blood, water, spirit. Now Yahweh is spirit. See how stupid that is? How are you going to get up off of Yahweh? <laughs> and Paul in the 17th chapter of Acts says, For in him we live, move, and have our being. Him who? Yahweh Elohim. See, we didn't even know where we live. And look, it's a principle. It's not a geographical location. And it's in your textbook, and Doc preached it from the floor, that where did you come from? And where do you abide? You're in the generative, I can't even say the word. Generative, thank you, organs of Yahweh Elohim. Go back to volume one, read page 50. It's about a half a dozen times in your textbook. That's where we live. That's where we move. That's where we have our being. Look, what did Moses see? He saw Yahweh Elohim transmutate or change into a thoroughly furnished, threefold, intangible tabernacle. Intangible. This is intangible. This is intangible. It's not physical. Moses is having a vision. And then he sees Elohim go back into, in, in, return back into a state of, 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 of anthropomorphic, and what, what does he see? He sees the whole universe, angelic and physical. Look, you've got a half man here. Where's it coming from? Where's it abide? Right within him. Now, look, you can't wrap your mind around that with a carnal mind. The natural mind can't penetrate spirit. Those things have to be revealed to us. You'll drive yourself crazy trying to figure stuff like that out from a natural standpoint or with carnal knowledge. You understand? Are they teaching that in the university, professor? They're hard-pressed to understand it right here in the institute. It just utterly amazes me. Look, folks, this stuff is unbelievable. You can't believe that on your own. I can't believe that on my own. It's beyond the flesh. We've got to be transported over here from this nonsense. And he did away with all that and nailed it to his cross. There's no physical water baptism anymore. Baptism is in the spirit. There's no physical circumcision anymore. The circumcision is of the heart and mind. If your soul or your mind or your heart believes physically, then you haven't been circumcised yet. Because that physical stuff has to be cut away. And that circumcision is not of the hands. The sacrifices that we offer up now are not physical. But that we do offer up sacrifices. The fruit of your lips is a sacrifice on the Yahweh. Let's go over to Psalms 
I think it's 51. Yes. Pick it up at, uh, pick it right up at one, please. Psalms 51 and 1. This is such a beautiful psalm. Mm -hmm. Have mercy upon me, O Elohim, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Mm -hmm. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sins. Wash me from my iniquity mm -hmm. and cleanse me from my sins. When the high priest on the Day of Atonement went into the most holy place on three principal trips, first he had to offer up a bullock for his sins and his family. That was for him. Right? Mm -hmm. Then he had to offer up a goat for the sins of the children of Israel. And each time that he did, he had to go in and circumnavigate that uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant and sprinkle the blood towards the mercy seat. Why? Because he's asking with the blood of a sacrifice, mercy. Mercy, Father. Mercy. Now the third principal trip that he went in, what's he sprinkling the blood for? The cleansing of the sanctuary. That had to be cleansed. Did he take on the sins of the world? He had to be cleansed. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. David knows the operation of that tabernacle. Read on. For I acknowledge my transgression uh -huh. and my sin is ever before me uh -huh. against thee Thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, back when David was alive, according to the old covenant, sins were passed from father to son and father to son. So what does he say? Read it again. Behold, um, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. I was shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. And in sin did my mother conceive. And in sin uh, was I born. <clears throat> the sins of his fathers are passed down on. And every other Jew. Back under the old covenant. But it ain't like that now. He came in. Go ahead. Keep reading. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in thee hidden part, thou shalt make me to know thy, to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that thy bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. So now, if you understand the gospel, and you're reading this, what are you looking at? Purge me with hyssop. Well, what did they do with the hyssop? They dipped it in what? Blood. So there's your principle of blood. Wash me. There's your principle of water. And make me to hear joy and gladness. There's the spirit. So you got blood, David preaching blood, water, spirit, if you understand the principles. And he didn't call for 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 1 through 4, did he? So you've got to get past the manifestation and look clean, clear into the principle. And that's what happens to us. We walk through the door and we're hung up on every manifestation that we've ever been in contact with. Look, folks, they're hung up on this manifestation in the other camp. What are you talking about? This is a manifestation of the one invisible Yahweh. It's the first distinct manifestation. This is the second manifestation, and it's just him transmutating into the flesh. It's still him. So Christianity is hung up on the cross. They can't get past the cross. Wear it around their neck, put it on the top of their church. It's, on, it's up in the altar where the preacher's preaching from. That's all death.
Oh, death. All right, keep reading to David. Make me to hear joy and gladness, mm -hmm. that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's, what's wrong with your old heart, David? And that new heart has to be created not just in David, but in us also. It's going to take away that stony heart. Go ahead. Create in me a clean heart, O Elohim, and renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. Restore unto me... He could do it back then. It wasn't permanent. But David recognized and realized it wasn't him that Yahweh had given him of his spirit, though temporary. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and upon me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's the only way they can be. Because David wouldn't be the teacher, it would be the Holy Spirit in David. And David's recognizing that, and he's realizing that. And if you, you, you keep your Holy Spirit in me, and I can do something with it. You take it from me and go back to the way I was. Read on. Deliver me from, from blood guiltiness, O Elohim, thou, thou Elohim of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Yahweh, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall... Show forth thy praise, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. O Elohim, thou would not despise. Do good in thy good pleasures unto Zion. Build thy walls of Jerusalem. Then shall thou be a then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offering. Then shall thy offer bullock upon thy altar. So, what are the sacrifices that David is bringing out here? Burnt offering? 17th verse. The sacrifice of Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. So, broken heartedness. Anybody feel any broken heartedness since you're coming in the door? Do you ever try to take this back to your family? Mm -hmm. If I could just get my mom to see this. If I could just get my sister to see this. You follow what I'm saying? And when they don't see it, what do you feel? Broken hearted. That's part of the purpose. We feel what he felt. If the same spirit be in us. We've got to go through the same trials and tribulations. Hopefully not as sincere. Most of us can't handle being a bloody mess. But they stoned Stephen to death. And what was his attitude? Different from Yahshua's? No. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. They were stoning Stephen. What they didn't realize is they were stoning Yahshua all over again. Because the same spirit that was in Yahshua since Pentecost is now in Stephen. And when Stephen cussed them out, that's when they took off their coats and hit it. Handed them to Paul, who witnessed it. And they commenced to stone him. Okay, what else? We're looking at spiritual sacrifices here. Broken heartedness. Meekness. Long suffering. 
Those are things that we can't do on our own. Those are things that we need divine help with. I've gotten mad at Joel a few times. And I had words with him a few times. Have, am I telling the truth? Was it vicious? No. Trying to keep things straight. Something he didn't see. And I count on his knowledge and understanding in the sciences to keep my me straight. But there's a way to go about it. And meekness and long suffering is a part of the spirit of Yahshua. And you know what? Long suffering's tough. But you can't throw in the towel. We all have to keep on trucking. And we need to be kind one to another. Everybody, including me. And you know what? Sometimes that's, a, that's difficult. Especially in a relationship. But it's required of us. So, I'll turn the floor back to the moderator. I hope you got something out of it. There's much to it. So keep on coming back to class. Thank you, Bob. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Um, we're here every Wednesday from 7 to 9, and every Sunday from 11 to 1. So hope to see you all again soon. Mm -hmm. and I just want to make a quick announcement. Sure. Okay, can we all rise for the doxology? Let me also say, I'm sorry, that we'll have donations also to state and international. And in April. I'll be reading the doxology as it is in the last two verses of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say in unity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.